Hello! Welcome to the last quarter of my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime reading vlog. It's the month of September, and I've decided to curse my month by first reading The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. And in the same month, I will be reading its sequel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I read two books in one month in the last quarter to give December a break from the poster, also so I can post other videos. So that's why I'm reading the two cursed twins this month. So I have started Tom Sawyer, and he's not a modern-day warrior with a mean, mean stride. He doesn't have mean, mean pride or anything. It's just little vignettes of little lessons that he's being taught. So far, the only thing that he's done that I know about is he's done the thing where he convinces his friend to paint the fence for him when he goes and plays hooky. He gets, like, beaten a lot by his aunt. There's a lot of, like, racial insensitivity and real slurs that are being said by children. I don't care if it's a different time. Still jarring to read. I feel like it would have been jarring to read even if I was alive back then. And the writing style is very, very hard to read, not just because they are putting an accent on some of the black characters, but also the really deep southern accents of everybody, and the fact that they're children so they're not pronouncing words properly making it a little hard to understand what the hell is going on, so I'm not really looking forward to reading these two books, but I'm just getting them out of the way so I can scratch them off my poster. I never had to read these in high school for obvious reasons, they're very outdated now, so I have no care for these, no past anything for these, so I just want these out of the way. Stay tuned for my next update! <laughs> Thanks, buddy, for hanging out with me, but I have to leave soon. So I just finished The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, and I only ended up giving it two stars. I didn't like it very much. There was a lot about it that I obviously didn't know, since my only cultural knowledge was the fence thing. I had no idea they, like, get caught in a murder subplot, and then they get trapped in a cave, and they find a dead body. All these things are pretty dark, they're pretty gruesome for, you know, children, but I guess I had to make the story interesting somehow, because him lying and being, you know, a brat about everything was gonna end up hitting him eventually, right? He had to learn his lessons. I don't really like the book that much. I get it. Like, it's like the first books written in that style, in that dialect, um, on a typewriter. It was one of the first books written on a typewriter. That's interesting. And it's just sort of a opening for what will eventually become The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, because it's a continuation of those characters. And I'm about to read that next, so stay tuned for my review, my initial ideas of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Hello there! I have finished The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, and I am giving it one and a half to two stars. I didn't end up doing a halfway check-in to talk about my thoughts on the book because head empty, nothing, nothing. This book gave me nothing, left me with nothing. I certainly did absorb a bunch of words on a page. Little bits of it were kind of interesting, like why they ended up on the boat, like the whole Huckleberry's, like, father came back and tried to get the money from him, and so he had to escape that. 
Um, same issues with the previous story, heavy racialized language, heavy black scent, heavy bad gross negative, even if it's trying to be neutral or positive, it's just inherently negative and racist and I just didn't like it. It's an older book, so fine, but just not for me, of course. I was actually happy to have that little tiny, tiny identity thing where um, Huckleberry pretended to be Tom Sawyer for a bit and then he showed up and he helped with the plan. I was like, cool, something familiar. But a lot of it was just bland, boring, I didn't like it. I'm glad they're out of the way now. So I apologize for not having that much to say on these two books. They just are what they are. They're those older books, right? They're classics for a reason, you know, a whole American South thing, blah, blah, blah. But tune in next month when I will be reading The Book Thief by Mark Suzak. Hello and welcome to the October section of this vlog. Happy Halloween season. Picking a spooky book off of the poster is proving to become more difficult because I've read all the books that are considered sort of spooky, but I think I found the perfect one for this month. And that is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. This is a young adult book about a young girl named Liesel in Nazi Germany as she starts to steal books from various means, whether it be Nazi book burnings or her interacting with the mayor's wife and going into her library to learn how to read. So this book is pretty, pretty popular amongst like YA readers. Lots of people list this book as one of their favorites of all time. And I can definitely see that if you read this book young. This is an excellent book for young readers so far. It's very, very good writing style. And the premise, the reason why I'm reading it in October, is because the narrator of the book is deaf themselves. So there is a lot about this book to like. I'm not dislike reading it. I'm having a good time reading it. I'm just not as captivated as many young audiences are. But so far, this is a solid read. I am like 50 to 80 pages into it so far. And it's alright. So far, it is better than reading... Mark Twain, so I will check in pretty soon. Okay, so I finished The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, and I am giving the book four stars. I know in my initial thoughts I wasn't properly getting into the story, but once the plot kicked in and Max was introduced, I was more heavily engaged. I thought that the book was just very well done. I really appreciated having the setup of death telling the story because it allows the language to be different. It allows the perspective to be more on omnipotent, omniscient, whatever that word is. And it allows the um, hindsight to, to happen. You, they can put hindsight into it because we understand that World War II is bad. I know that I wouldn't really be getting into the story if it was entirely from Liesel's point of view. So I'm glad that we had that outside sort of adult voice guiding the story. I just thought that it was way easier to ingest that way. I did enjoy the book and it did make me cry, but I don't want to give it five stars because it's not a favorite and also because it felt like it was making me cry in the way where it was like, haha, I'm making you cry because it's so tragic. Like, of course, a story set in this time period is going to be tragic and moving and the way that the story was told was very moving. It just, I didn't feel that good cry. I just felt the sad cry and to me, that's not a five star. But I totally understand why people call this a favorite book of all time, especially if they've read it young, as I said earlier. It was very, very, very well done. The writing was exceptionally beautiful and very, very moving. I read this at work a lot, and I found myself tearing up a bit, especially at the little picture book that Max made for Liesel. I really liked Max, so... I'm glad that the story ended in the way that it did. So that was my October read. Tune in next month for a very short and quick and fun read of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland.
Hello, happy November, happy final month in my year of reading books from the poster. So this month I am reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I am reading it from this very stunning 1980s Simon & Schuster edition that is illustrated. In the clip where I am reading the book, I wasn't feeling the greatest, so I didn't really talk much about my final thoughts as I was reading it. You will see that now. Hello. It is a quiet evening for me. I've been feeling pretty anxious today, so I thought that I would cool down by putting on some calming music and reading in bed. Today I've chosen Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So that is both the first and the second one, Alice Through the Looking Glass. I'm going to try to be reading Alice in Wonderland first, and then I will read the other one later. thought I would do that to feel better because I've been feeling pretty low lately. haven't been feeling the greatest about anything, so let's try and feel good. So my final thoughts of the first part of the book, which is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, I thought that the book was very beautiful and very stunning. I really enjoyed all of the poetry and songs in it. I enjoyed that there was just a lot of confusion in what was going on because it's definitely what a child will experience in the adult world where there are random rules, where there are random changes, where there are random assumptions and there is random outrage at something where you might accidentally say something offensive without you knowing it. It displays a wonderful attitude at how children see the world and it's pretty universal even to today because there's just a lot of hidden rules, manners, words, phrases, things you're supposed to know, and I think that that's captured very, very well in this story. I was also surprised to see that a lot of the elements from the Disney movies and other adaptations of the novel is that a lot of the characters and events weren't in the first book. I'm assuming they're going to be in the next book. Yes, we did get the Mad Hatter, the Caterpillar, the Cheshire Cat, and the Queen of Hearts, but we didn't get Tweedledee and Tweedledum or the Jabberwocky, so I'm looking forward to seeing them in the other story. Plus, I just wanted to say that the art in this copy is very stunning. Look at how beautiful that is. I just adored reading from this copy. I think that it was really well displayed and I really really enjoyed the art. The artist did a wonderful job and I will list their name. I really really enjoyed this book and I can't wait to read the other one which is Alice Through the Looking Glass. If I have anything to say about Alice Through the Looking Glass I will add the clip in here before I show off the scratching of the poster. So Alice Through the Looking Glass was just all right. I preferred the first one a lot better. I felt like the second one didn't really have a direction that it was going. It was just sort of like now the king and queen are here. And now the walrus and the carpenter are here. Humpty Dumpty's here. Like, he already existed as a character. So it just felt like a bit like, oh, it's the sequel. So, you know, more is going to happen. <laughs> my favorite part was, of course, the walrus and the carpenter, because it's one of my favorite poems. And I liked the queen's little thing about jam. That was funny. So, yeah, liked it a bit less than the first one, but it was okay. But if that's it, then that's it. That's my final book that I read this year for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster. I scratch off 12 a year now, and I'm getting pretty, pretty high on my poster. I'm over halfway done, and that is an accomplishment that I am excited about. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all next year with a new quarterly vlog. Bye-bye.